Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. I'm Mr. Giant and I'm back with some more vibes for all you. Yes, I am. We are continuing with the Hannibal series, you know. We're into part nine now. And this one is Back Across the Alpines. I don't know, how do you pronounce that? A Pyrenees? A Pyrenees. <laughs> Alpines. A Pyrenees, people. A Pyrenees. But anyway, in the last one, we saw Hannibal uh, getting uh, uh, boxed in by the appointed dictator in Rome and him outsmarting that dictator and escaping. Uh, with his troops and stuff like that to fight another day, you know what I mean? And it was, it was some really interesting cat and mouse going on with the Roman dictator just following him despite political pressure from Rome, you know, from, from, from the, the, the Senate, I guess, uh, you know, and, uh, and even his second in command, you know, attack, 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 and he was like, no, 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 let's follow my man, see what he's up to, you know what I mean? And of course he didn't attack when they believe he should, when when uh, Hannibal was boxed in and Hannibal outsmarted everybody and using a tactic that they said would be used by other military uh, generals in later years. But, you know, this one is called uh, Back Across the Apennines. Man, why am I having so much trouble pronouncing stuff, to, you know? Uh, on this one. But anyway, let's YouTube and Sim Simmer and see how Hannibal got back across the Pyrenees. Our Pyrenees. But we're going to see how it's pronounced during the video. And I'm probably going to get it wrong again. It's late summer, 217 BC. As the fires across the Aga Falinus Valley died down after months of Carthaginian raiding, the locals returned to their burned towns and cities, struggling to bring their lives back to normal. Having outwitted Fabius, Hannibal escaped the valley. And now there was real fear in the Roman Senate as the Carthaginian general marched north towards Rome itself. Ooh, he's going for and the big as a prize. of our channel, you should definitely check out our friends over at Curiosity Stream, my personal favorite streaming service that features thousands of documentaries geared towards the lifelong quest to learn Curiosity Stream. And by registering, you'll also be supporting our channel. Escaping the Aga Falinus Valley with his army and plunder intact again highlighted Hannibal's genius. And as the Carthaginian army now marched north along the Volturnus River, fears in Rome were reignited that the attack on the city was imminent. But despite the road to Rome being open for the second time, Hannibal marshaled his army back into the Apennine Mountains. Apennine, okay. His string of victories was not enough to secure alliances in Italy, and the Carthaginian general knew that without a firm foothold in the plains of Campania, he needed to establish winter quarters in a better strategic position. Heading back east to his old campaigning ground near the Adriatic coast was a prudent decision. Encumbered with plunder and herds of cattle, the Carthaginians moved slowly cutting a swathe of destruction along their line of march, ravaging farms and property, collecting provisions and prisoners as they moved, unopposed by Fabius. While this unchallenged destruction of Roman lands and the prior escape from the Aga Falinus Valley were the two latest embarrassing incidents that caused outrage against Fabius and the Senate, it was in fact his strategy that preserved the Roman army from potential destruction. Thanks to Fabius, the Republic stayed in the fight, which arguably kept their Italian allies from joining Hannibal. 
Yet, due to his cautious war plans, Fabius's popularity in Rome was crumbling, and his allies in the Senate found it impossible to rally political support around him. It also didn't help that, by now, news spread throughout Rome that Fabius's property and lands were spared during Carthaginian raiding of the Argo oh, Valley, propaganda. which cast further doubts about him. The Roman general tried in vain to improve his reputation by selling parts of his property to ransom Roman prisoners from Hannibal after hearing that the Senate would not fund their release. But despite the unabating criticism against him and demands for a more aggressive stance, he kept to the Fabian strategy, refusing to be drawn into a battle not of his choosing and continued to shadow Hannibal. His scorched earth policy had a very limited effect as many citizens refused to burn their towns and crops. But it did manage to hamper the movement of the Carthaginian army, which did not have a secure supply chain and had to live off the land. Meanwhile, Hannibal reached a place he deemed suitable for his winter quarters, the town of Geronium. The town of Geronium. It is unclear if Geronium was taken by force when Hannibal's terms were rejected, or if he took possession of the town after the inhabitants fled. Either way, Hannibal encamped just outside the town and had his troops repair the collapsed wall, as well as surround the town with a trench and a palisade, turning Geronium into a fortified granary for the Carthaginian army, where provisions and livestock were stored. The sick and wounded recovered in the camp, as thousands fanned out to forage the fertile plain to the west, while others pastured the cattle and horses on the hillsides to the east. With enough provisions to last until spring, in a strong defensive position, with several roads offering multiple mountain crossings into Apulia, Geronium was the perfect place to winter with an army. Meanwhile, in the foothills across the valley, the Romans arrived some three days later and began encamping. They're just the look watching them. The in the Senate finally boiled over, forcing Fabius to depart for Rome. Officially, he journeyed to the capital to observe religious duties. However, the more likely reason for his absence from the front line was to confront his critics and explain his actions in an effort to salvage any support he could for his campaign. While the political discussion raged on, back in the Roman camp near Geronium, Minutius assumed a more aggressive stance. As second in command, he was left in charge of the army with orders to follow the Fabian strategy. But, eager to put pressure on Hannibal, he ego with ego. In the plain, from where he sent out parties of cavalry and velites to hunt down the Carthaginian foragers. Although most of the foragers escaped unharmed, Hannibal moved quickly to protect his foraging grounds by sending 2,000 Libyans to occupy the ridge overlooking the Roman camp. And just to the south, he established a temporary camp where he stationed two-thirds of his army. Eager to square up against the enemy, Minutius sent the heavy infantry towards the Carthaginian camp, while his light infantry and cavalry went for the ridge. This seemingly created a problem for Hannibal. Not only was he outnumbered, but he left his cavalry in the main camp. Whether he did this intentionally to appear weaker and trick the Romans into attacking, or because the horses needed resting, he now lacked the mobility needed for the clash against Minutius. With superior numbers and mobility on their side, the Romans took the ridge. Seeing his chance to put more pressure on the Carthaginians, Minutius moved his camp to the top of the captured hill. Expecting another attack, Hannibal restricted all foraging operations, keeping the troops in a state of readiness within the forward camp. 
But Minucha stayed put, and after a few days of inaction, the Carthaginian general finally broke the stalemate by sending troops to forage in ever-increasing numbers each day, until eventually some 4,000 men were committed. Dispersing so many troops in the surrounding countryside, while already being outnumbered, begs the question, did Hannibal so desperately need provisions for the winter and was forced to forage? Or did he want to weaken his position, perhaps even appear incompetent, to provoke Minucius into fighting and winning a few skirmishes with the aim of luring the Roman general into a trap once he became overconfident? Whatever the case, Minucius answered in force. Oh yeah, he going to place, man. He led man. heavy infantry against the Carthaginian camp, while sending his cavalry and light infantry through the back gate to hunt down the foragers. The skirmish was a bloody affair, with the Romans getting the better of the engagement, killing many of Hannibal's foragers. Realizing it was time to regroup, Hannibal marched back to his main camp. Exaggerated accounts of this victory caused widespread rejoicing in Rome. Senators and citizens alike believed that they finally had a commander who can defeat Oh them. boy, I think Hannibal has got something Hailed up his sleeve. Hailed for his success, a law was hastily passed that made Minucius co-dictator which was effectively a return to having two senior magistrates in charge. But things did not go smoothly. Fabius urged caution while Minucius wanted to take aggressive action. Due to persistent arguments over strategy, Fabius proposed that they command the army on alternate days, or split the army into two independent commands. Minucius decided to take four legions and establish his own camp. Man, he divided the thing, you know? He's dividing up the army and thing. Why would you split them up? Two separate camps. That would kind of weaken them and would make it easier for Hannibal to attack. I guess we'll see if that's the case in the next. Uh, uh, the next part man this thing is just going crazy here but anyway thank you all for watching this with me i didn't talk much in this one because man there was just so much going on you know what i mean there's, it seems like there's a lot of guerrilla warfare going on to a certain degree you know what i mean uh, organized guerrilla warfare more organized than what's usually done by the by uh by the Romans, you know, by going out there and getting at the, uh, the, the the forages and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But Hannibal probably had something up his sleeve. And I know it's history, but it's history I haven't read yet. So for me, the next step is going to be really interesting. You all take care of each other. Cool runnings.